pray a selfish prayer. Because most of our prayers are very much selfish. That's the reason why we will fail to expand in life. God knows what you want. He knows what you need. He knows everything about you. Amen. Then why do you have to tell him to remind him? Why do you have to remind God about what you want? Ask your neighbor, why do you have to remind God about your needs? It's not necessary. Otherwise, you're going to give God time. When that time is passing, depression will come to you. You hear me? Amen. When you remind God about your needs, tell your neighbor, when you remind God about your needs, you're going to set time for him. And when that time passes, depression will come. And from there, you are the one that will say, you see, this God is not working. You see, I went everywhere. Uh, because many of you here, you have been traveling a lot to different churches. You know, I was telling people on Wednesday, I said, we are living in a time where people are no longer coming to church because they want to worship God. No, they are coming here because they've got a problem. In fact, without problems, there's no church. In this time that we are living in, without a problem, there's no church. Because if you check, 90% of people that come to a service, they are crying for something. God me, hey, God me, hey, God me, hey, hey, hey. Huh? God, you see, my age is going. Uh, my age mates are getting married. God, God, God I need a car. Uh, uh, it's all about I need, I need. When will you, ask your neighbor, when will you have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Without expecting anything from him. When will you do that? Ask your neighbor, when will you do that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm sure you are hearing what I'm trying to tell you. Amen. Huh? Amen. A church now is becoming a place. That's the reason why people now will, will insult pastors now. And say, uh, you know, people are preaching prosperity. It's because Christians are channeling this thing that is called Christianity in a wrong way now. We go to church because we have to receive this. I go to church because I have to get this. It's no longer, you know, about Jesus. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, let's go back to God now and search for the face of God. I can't hear you. Can you say that to your neighbor again? And tell your neighbor, know why you are here. You know, maybe I must say it. Don't be here because of the material. Oh. It is because you come to church, if that material you are looking for, you can't have it, you sit home. You don't come to church again. Because what you're looking for, you, you're not receiving. You sit home. Tell your neighbor, we are, we are not, you are not here to receive a car. Tell them, you are not here to receive a car. What does the Bible say about church? What does it say? Huh? Those that are reading the Bible. What does it say about church? Hmm? Pastors? I'm sure there's pastors. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, I want to pray for you, but you people, I, I just wanted you to understand why you are here. Yeah. 
Because we are missing the point. In many cases, we are, you are missing the point of why do I go to church? When you fail to receive what you are looking for, you don't come to church again. You sit at home and say, hey, it's very cold. I've been praying. God is not answering my prayers. What is your prayer? What is your prayer? One day, another prophet said, if you can pray the way I pray, I think God will answer you. I understood why. You know, one of the prophets that we had, who passed away, he said, if you can pray the way I pray, there's no way God cannot hear you. So now the question is that how does he pray? That's the question. I don't think he had time to ask God for the material things. I don't think so. Today I want to pray for you. Amen. No, you know, you, you need to have a spiritual connection with Jesus. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. amen. Your amen is very weak. How many of you, you are ready to have a spiritual connection with Jesus? If your spirit is very strong, you can't talk about the flesh. I don't know if you are hearing me. Huh? A, a man and a woman that is spiritual can't focus more about what is happening here. I don't know if you are hearing me. Huh? Huh? Amen. Maybe let me pray for you. Because it's like I'm speaking alone. But I'm sure you're hearing me. Amen. I'm not going to take long. I'm going to pray for you very quick because time is gone. But I'm, I'm feeling like many of you, you, you are losing that thing of the old times. Look what the old people used to do. They used to sell everything. That's what the word of God says. To support. To support who? Huh? To support who? Huh? The ministers of the world so that the gospel must be spread. You can't see it in this day. This day, the time we're living in, you can't see it. You can't see it. So now you see that Everything about Jesus, you know, people are starting to devalue it. It's losing direction and meaning. You know, if you're a Christian, you must wear a suit. You know, if you're a Christian, you must wear a suit. If I'm not wearing a suit, I'm not a Christian. If I'm a pastor, I'm poor, I'm not anointed. If I'm a pastor, you know, and I don't have anything, it means I don't have anointing. That's the generation we're living in. Those that are anointed, they are the ones who have got this and that and everything. That's anointing to you. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. I pray that today God must show you must bring the light to you. Amen. I say, I pray that Jesus must bring light to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? Huh? I say, Jesus must bring light to you. We're, we are really moving away from the meaning of the gospel. The gospel of Jesus. But we are moving away from that. I'm sure you're hearing me. Amen. Can I pray for you now? Amen. Huh? Amen. Huh? Amen. Well, I'm, te I used, I'm telling visitors this thing all the time before I pray for you. I say, you visitors, if I don't have a car, I come here with a bicycle. None of you will listen to me. I tell them that all the time. One day I said, I want to come here on a Sunday with my flip-flops and a short. 
I'll come and say, receive in the name of Jesus. And you will see, you'll, you'll receive. I'm telling you. You'll receive. Let us not devalue this thing. We redirect things according to our own carnal minds. If you want to be a Christian, it means you must be like, that's the reason why we have got sinners that are afraid to come here. Because we play better, we act better, we think we are the most perfect people on earth. But you find in front of Jesus, you might be the worst. Let us find ourselves and go back and read the word of God. It will show you how we are supposed to live. I'm sure you're hearing me. Huh? I'm telling you the truth. There are people that, they, they, they are not Christians, but when they think about coming to church, hey, you, you will hear them that they feel segregated. Or I, when a man, you are not worthy of, of being here. <laughs> I know people that they don't have clothes. It's difficult for them to come to church. I'm telling you. Because uh, Bazalwani are associated with nice clothes. If someone who doesn't have clothes, there I know many who used to say that I don't have clothes, I can't go to church. Can you see that now? Can you see that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Many souls are dying because of how we handle ourselves as Christians. Amen. Tell your neighbors a change. change. Let's change the way things are being done. Let's change the way things are done. I'm telling you, if we change, you will see all churches will have overflow. Because everyone will feel welcomed. Everyone will feel at home now. But the way things are happening now, mm, Christianity is something that other people are even afraid of. It's Christianity is about class. Class. If you don't have this, you can't be here. This thing must change. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. How many of you are ready to do that? To bring a change in the kingdom of God. Huh? Lift up your hands. You pray just one minute and I want to come to you. Open your mouth and you pray. Let's ask God for forgiveness. Ask God for forgiveness. I the way Things are happening now. Pray, pray, pray. I can't hear you. In Jesus' name. Do, do you know why, uh, besides the spiritual you know, part of it, do you know why churches where there's a uniform, you know, they, they have a lot of members? Do you know why? Huh? Because everyone when is there doesn't feel inferior about another. Yeah? Uh, I can't hear you. They don't feel inferior because we are wearing the same thing, isn't it? Yes. Maybe today I must pray for you to receive money. 
Let me come and stand here. Aye. Let us not do things the way we are doing them. Christianity must not have class. Amen. That if you are like this, you can't be here. Because if you check, there are churches that you can be afraid to enter. Because when they are there, they even call each other by titles. Dr. Whom whom? You are Dr. What what? You are Professor what? And what about Renewal State School? No. Jesus didn't die for these things that we are seeing now. It's a shame to the body of Christ. I want us to pray for the last time and I want to come to you. Open your mouth and pray. Okay. Oh God. You raise me up so I can stand the mountain. You raise me up to open storm and seas. Let's pray. Take my key. Pray, pray, pray. I'm coming to you. You raise me up to walk on stones. Pray, pray. You raise me up to more than I can be. You raise me up. So I can stand on my own. You raise me up over storm and sea. Pray, pray, just one minute. Let us allow God to change the way things are happening. We need more people in the church. Jesus is coming back. Raise me up. Walk on storm and sea. Raise me up. Tomorrow. Raise me up so I can stand on mountain. Raise me up to walk on storm and 
seconds left. Raise me up. Come and see. I am strong when I am on the shoulder. Raise In Jesus' mighty name.